Now having understood the impact of preference convertible shares on EPS, now let's look at the second convertible security that is called as convertible debt. Now convertible debt uh, is nothing but a debt that also has a feature of converting itself into common shares. So we have earlier looked at what convertible debt would actually mean. Uh, just to take an example, let's say we have 5% dollar 100 par value of you know, maybe 1000 bonds. Now what would this mean is that this debt will pay an interest of 5% on the overall value. The overall value is 100 into 1000. So the interest expense will be 5000 in this case. But when it is a convertible debt, they also have a feature that they will get converted into certain number of shares. So each bond comes with an attached option of converting into shares at a predetermined price. So this additional option will be something like this. Each bond let's say converts into four shares. So on the other side, if it converts, the total number of shares will that will be released in the system will be 4000. So at any given point of time, either the company will be showing interest expense on its income statement or will show additional number of shares in addition to the regular common shares that they have. So let us look at how this equation affects the EPS. So what do we have in the EPS? We have the net income minus the preferred dividends divided by the number of common shares. So as we can see if we are talking about an impact because of the convertible, there will be two things that will happen. One, that the denominator will change. The denominator will change to an extent of the number of shares that gets converted. So say for example here it will be 4000. The effect on the numerator can be understood with the help of an example. So let me uh, take the case where the company has earnings before interest and taxes as uh, 10,000 and uh, the interest expense as we have discussed here is around 5,000. So what we get is the earnings before taxes that is 5,000. Taxes would be at the rate of let's say 30% assuming. So this would be 1,500. So your net income will be equal to 3,500. So here if there is a presence of interest what happens is your net income reduces and this is what is linked to your numerator here. When the debt is normal, it is not converted. Now what happens when this debt gets converted? So once it gets converted, there is no interest expense altogether. So what will happen in your income statement will be like this. Your EBIT will be 10,000. Your interest expense will be zero because it is converted into common shares. So no existence of debt. So your EBT will be 10,000. Your taxes will be at the rate of 30%. So this becomes 3,000. So your net income actually increases to 7,000. So earlier it was 3,500 and now it has increased to 7,000. So the net impact of conversion on the net income is basically an increase in the net income. And how much this amount is all about? So if you want to kind of uh, directly come to the impact in, in a way of a formula, this would be the interest expense multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate. So what was the interest expense? The interest expense was 5,000 and 1 minus tax rate, tax rate is 30%. So this 5,000 multiplied by 70%. So this comes out to be 3,500. So the additional impact because of the conversion will be additional 3,500. So here 3,500 plus 3,500 will lead to 7,000. So this is how the impact of convertible debt is being calculated in the numerator. So if there is a, a conversion of debt, what happens is like in the case of preferred dividend, we had added back the convertible preferred dividend. We'll add here the interest expense multiplied by 1 minus T. So this is what we are going to do 
in this formula. So the formula becomes net income minus preferred dividends plus the interest expense into 1 minus t divided by common shares plus the total number of conversions because of the conversion of debt. So let's now look at a detailed example uh, to see its working formulas.